Thanks for joining us as we continue our coverage of the search and rescue operation from a sunken ferry off Korea's southwest. It's Wednesday, April 23rd here in Seoul, and I'm Chi Yusun. As we find out more about what exactly happened at the time of the accident, anger continues to grow among families of the victims who have been criticizing the government for its slow response. For more, we connect to our Yurian standing by at the news center. Lian, tell us more. Yusan, there were a number of things the families of the victims wanted to see out at the site of the accident. For instance, a barge which can be used, which can be used by rescuers to rest and better prepare for dives. Now, these barges were needed by the divers who were struggling against strong tides and the cold temperatures underwater. The demand was made last Wednesday, but done on Saturday. And that's not all. Take a look. We parents were demanding barges. We also asked for squid fishing boats. The government only tried to come up with the countermeasures after everything happened. Now, squid fishing boats have powerful lights that uh, help rescue divers operate at night, and they were deployed Saturday on the fourth day of rescue operations. Leanne, it seems like everyone is passing along the blame while the families are pointing their fingers at the government's response. Prosecutors continue their investigation into the crew members and the captain. And those in custody uh, have just recently been charged with homicide? That's right. 11 of the 15 crew members, of course, including the captain that escaped the Seoul ferry, have been taken into custody. And they're now being charged with negligent homicide. The charge is placed on those who have failed to carry out rescue operations, resulting in deaths, and carries a three year jail sentence. Now, these crew members have been undergoing intense investigation. Four of them have conveyed s severe psychological distress and are receiving medical treatment at a hospital. Lian, the ferry's operator, the Changyejin Marine Company, is also under fire. Tell us more about that. That's right, Yusan. The prosecutors seem to think the fundamental reason for the sinking of the Seoul ferry lies with its operator. Now, earlier this week, officials from the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries said the Changyejin Marine Company was negligent regarding safety checks on the ferry. Investigators are looking into the possibility that the practical owner, Yu Byung An, lobbied his way into getting out of those safety checks. A joint investigation team earlier today raided some 10 offices and homes of Yu, and as as well as the headquarters of the Changyejin Marine Company here in Seoul. Now, there's another investigation taking place simultaneously. The joint investigation team also began preparations for a simulation that takes into account wind, ocean currents, fright, and modifications made to the ship in order to figure out the exact cause of the accident. It has announced that it will finish setting up a team of experts and will begin the process as early as tomorrow morning. And we have just learned that North Korea has sent a letter of condolence to the Korean National Red Cross this afternoon at around 4 p.m. local time, uh, expressing deep consolation in regards to the passengers that have passed away or are still missing. I'll keep you updated as we learn more. All right, thank you, Leanne. Another piece of uh, has been added to the puzzle of which may have caused the Sewol Ho to capsize abruptly. Local media reporting that there may have been a problem with the steering gear of the Sungen ferry for weeks leading up to the accident. Our Park Ji Won has the details. This is a repair request form submitted by the crew of the Sewol Ho ferry to ferry operator Chang Hyejin Marine Company about two weeks before the tragic accident. It says the steering gear of the now sunken ferry was sending no voltage warnings. Crew members said they had to reset the power and rely on an onboard power supply while they were waiting for power to be restored. 
The request form added the fundamental cause of the issue was unknown. However, the ferry operator took no action on the issue. Korean broadcaster YTN reported Wednesday that a ship repair company that had worked on the Seolho ferry before said it had not repaired the steering gear of the Seolho ferry any time recently, nor had it received any repair requests about the steering gear. Experts say the steering gear is key to safe sailing for a ship, that any problem in the steering gear increases the likelihood of an accident and that ships with steering system problems should be prevented from setting sail. However, Changhejin Marine Company appears to have continued to allow the ill-fated Seolho ferry to operate for more than two weeks, leading up to the accident last week. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Experts in Japan have run a simulation to try and determine what caused the Seolho to capsize. All signs point to the ferry's cargo, which they believe was not loaded properly. Our Sun Jung-in has more. This is closed-circuit television footage of the Seoro ferry on the day of her departure from Incheon Harbor. Vehicles are loaded onto the vessel one after another, 30 more automobiles than was previously declared. The last vehicle is loaded and just three minutes later, the ferry sets sail. Experts say that's not enough time for the crew to correctly secure the freight. We assume the crew tied only two ropes instead of four. They may have just tied things up loosely before the departure. Japanese researchers carried out a simulation to find out what happens when freight in a vessel is not fastened up properly. They made a model 150th the real size of the Seoro and raised the center of mass in consideration of the fact that the Seoro ferry had been renovated recently. First, they ran the simulation without any cargo. Sailing at 5 km per hour the same speed as the Seoro, when turned right, the model sharply leaned outward toward the turn due to centrifugal force but did not capsize. Next, they added some weight to the ship to account for the mass of the freight and fastened it tightly. When given an abrupt turn, the model again tilts sharply to one side but is able to balance back without falling. Then they tried again, this time with the same amount of weight but without fixing it properly. At first, it seemed to be navigating smoothly but as soon as it makes a sharp turn, it lists it to one side and capsized in a matter of seconds. When a vessel makes a sharp turn without its freight properly fastened, a heavier centrifugal force is applied, causing the vessel to list more outward. In extreme cases, the ship can capsize. It is common for the captain or the chief mate to take at least an hour to make sure all cargo is secure tied before setting sail. Japanese experts say there was no time to do that in the Seoro's case last week, which leads them to believe that improper fastening of the freight may have been the main cause of the accident. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Let's now go over to our Hwang Sang-hee, who's been reporting from the nearest port from the accident site. Sangi, dozens of bodies were retrieved in search operations overnight, but still no word of a single survivor. That's right, Yusan. It's been a week since the Seoro ferry, uh, ferry sank down, but uh, not a single survivor has been found. The total number of confirmed death toll currently stands at 156. Now, most of the bodies retrieved today uh, were high school students. We still have around 150 people missing in the sunken ship, and most of them, nearly 90 percent of them, are high school students. The families of the missing camping out here at the Pengmokang Harbor are clinging to every last shred of hope, but they are growing restless. I've seen family members who've received reports confirming the death of their child collapse and pass out, and others are weeping and crying out into the open sea, telling their children to return. Now, with the rising death toll, temporary funeral parlor has been set up here at this harbor uh, for a funeral process. Sangi, how's the search and rescue operation going? Any progress being made?
Well, the rescue teams are focusing their search on the third and fourth floors of the vessel. Now, that's where the cabins are, and authorities believe that many of the passengers would have been in their cabins at the time of the accident because it was around 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, this was backed up by one of the passengers who was on the Seorho ferry. Let's take a listen. I was rescued early, so I don't know the current situation. But based on what I saw, there were students on the third and fourth floors where the cabins are. They were told to wait, and that's why it became too late to rescue them. He was one of the first to be rescued when the ferry capsized, but his wife still remains in the sunken ship. But authorities said there were no air pockets in some of the compartments searched on the third and fourth floor, which greatly reduces the chances of finding survivors. And unfortunately, high-tech drones like the remotely operated vehicles are not yielding many results. More than 200 rescue ships, 34 aircraft and 550 divers are continuing their rescue operations today. It's been a week since the tragedy and messages of support for those still missing in the sunken ship were sent to Pengmukang Harbor from across the nation. The messages read, we love you all and that miracles will happen. This has been Huang Sangyi reporting from Pengmukang Harbor. It's been a devastating week for the families of the missing, feeling helpless and waiting for news of their loved ones. The families have been staying at a gymnasium near the accident site in Tindo, and they, they're at the brink of exhaustion, both physically and mentally. Our Huang Jie joins us live from there. Jie? Yushan, the families here seem like their patients are reaching to an end as their unbearable waiting goes on for an eighth day. Doctors here at the gymnasium say that the families are in a state of panic, which are resulting in headaches and exhaustion. They add that while now is the worst time for the families to mentally cope with the devastating situation, the symptoms of depression could recur after two or three months. And while stress mounts for the families here, a man who was naked ran through the gymnasium yelling words that were not comprehensible. The man was later confirmed to be mentally delayed and had nothing to do with the families here. Yuzan? Tia, we hear that the government is deploying more resources for the comfort of the families there. Right. A representative of the families said a few hours ago that uh, the bodies found at the Pengwokong Harbor will be transferred to the hospitals by four military helicopters. He added that they will quicken the process of bodies being sent back home. There, the families could also ride together. While the whole country is hopefully waiting for news of survivors, along with the families here, hundreds of volunteer workers came to the Jindo Gymnasium to support the families here and to encourage the families desperately waiting for their missing ones to stay strong. This has been Huang Jie reporting live from the Jindo Gymnasium. All right, thank you, Jihe, and we'll be back shortly. The entire nation is mourning the abrupt loss of so many lives. Koreans are holding candlelight vigils, making donations on and offline, and trying to cope with this tragic incident together. In Ansan, the city touched the most by this tragedy, a memorial service is taking place to pay tributes to the young victims of Tanwon High School. We have our Kim ji joining us live from the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall. ji Yusan, I'm standing in Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall where an altar has been set up so that the public can pay their respects to the fallen. As you can see behind me, more there are portraits of high school students, more than 48 of them and teachers are displayed. More than 6,000 people have visited this place to say their last goodbyes. In front of the memorial hall, people place post-it memos, letters to the deceased. I talked to one of them, 59-year-old Oh chun Sik, who was born and raised in Ansan and has lived there his whole life. 
I hope the students are in a better place, and I pray that their hopes and dreams that they had here are fulfilled there instead. I have an aching inside that cannot be put into words. This is a temporary altar, and local authorities are setting up a funeral in a larger location, uh, expecting more bodies to come in the coming days. A group funeral funeral will be held at Ansan's uh, recreation. Hwarang Recreational Park, where the public can say their goodbyes starting Tuesday. Tian setting up a memorial altar must require a lot of help, and from what we hear, a lot of volunteers are chipping in. Citizens from Ansan and volunteers from all over the country are lending a helping hand, bringing basic necessities and medical supplies. To help support our community in this time of need, we have made all of our medicine and resources available to Danwon High School and will continue to do so until the altar is removed. This could not have been possible without the help of the community. It shows that the nation is coming together in times of crisis. And our hearts go out to all the victims and their families. But how are the student survivors uh, coping with the current situation? Well, a majority of the students are receiving treatment for over a week now, and they can be discharged later this week. But some of the guardians of the students said that they want them to stay put in the hospital due to concerns of mental trauma. In the high school, some 50 counselors are standby for the students, and they can receive regular counseling sessions and med medication if they if they are needed. This was Kim Jeon live at the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall. Fourteen teachers from Tanwan High School were on the ill-fated trip to the resort island of Jeju when the Sewolho ferry sank. On that Wednesday, when the ferry capsized, three teachers were rescued while 11 were unaccounted for. One of those teachers who didn't make it was more concerned about her students than herself until the very end. Chun Su Young was her name, and our Connie Lee has her story. In the last desperate moments before the ship was going down, a daughter texts her mother, Mom, the ship is sinking. In shock and in confusion, the mother calls her daughter, Chun Su Young, right away. <laughs> To her boyfriend, Suyong texts him that there are no life vests. I'm sorry. The boyfriend calls her immediately. They hang up after 12 seconds on the line. Suyong tells him that she needs to call her students' parents. Her last words to her boyfriend, I love you and thank you. It was Suyong's second year as a homeroom teacher at Tanwon High School. And as for the school's yearly field trip, this one to Jeju Island on the Seolho Ferry was her first. Her room remains untouched since the day she left for the ill-fated trip. Her bike, too, remains parked, waiting for Suyong to return. Apparently, her grandmother is also waiting for her granddaughter to come home safely. But as much as there is sadness over the loss, her mother is also proud of her daughter, who put the lives of her students before her own. Connie Lee, Arirang News. Anytime the presidents of South Korea and China talk, the topic of North Korea usually dominates the conversation. But Sewol Ho Ferry disaster was foremost on the minds of Presidents Park Geun-hye and Xi Jinping Wednesday when they spoke over the phone. Kim Min-ji has more.
In a phone conversation Wednesday, President Park Geun-hye thanked Chinese leader Xi Jinping for his words of comfort to the victims of the ill-fated Seoul ferry disaster and expressed sadness that some Chinese passengers were still among the missing. She said he was also deeply saddened by the fact that the majority of the missing and deceased were young students. He added that his thoughts were with the victims and their families. The Chinese president also said that Beijing will provide search and rescue assistance to Seoul. The two leaders also talked about North Korea. President Park urged her Chinese counterpart to dissuade Pyongyang from carrying out a fourth nuclear test, saying it would change the security paradigm in Northeast Asia. Park said another nuclear test could start an arms race and create a nuclear domino effect in the region. North Korea carried out nuclear tests in 2006, 2009, and 2013. President Park added that a fourth test could also hamper efforts to resume the stalled multinational talks aimed at denuclearizing North Korea. She reassured Park that both nations share the same interest of a denuclearized North Korea. He said that Beijing would do its best to help maintain peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. The Chinese leader added that he would encourage dialogue between the related parties and also express support for the trust-building process initiated by Bak and for a peaceful reunification of the two Koreas. Kim min Arirang News. North Korea is fully prepared to conduct a nuclear test, according to the South Korean government. With U.S. President Barack Obama having embarked on his Asia tour this Wednesday, there's been fresh speculation Pyongyang may attempt to make a statement while he's in the region in the form of a fourth nuclear test. For more on this, our Shin Se-min reports. South Korea's defense ministry says North Korea is ready to conduct a nuclear test at any time. In a press briefing Wednesday, a Ministry of National Defense official said the North Punggye-ri nuclear test site appears to be on standby with an open ticket in hand. This would run counter to what a recent report by the U.S.-based North Korea analysis site 38 North suggests. It says it's unlikely that the regime will carry out a fourth nuclear test while U.S. President Barack Obama is visiting the region over the next week. The report cited analysis of satellite imagery, which indicates the recent activities at the nuclear site differ from those leading up to past tests. But a Korean official said the data on the 38 North website is different from what the government has. The U.S. says it is keeping close watch on movements in the North amid speculation that it may carry out a fourth nuclear test. Speaking to reporters on Air Force One, White House spokesman Jay Carney said the U.S. is monitoring movements at the North Punggye-ri nuclear test site. The U.S. State Department echoed Carney's sentiment and urged North Korea to exercise restraint. We continue to urge North Korea to refrain from actions that threaten regional peace and security and to comply with its international obligations and commitments. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. We now turn to our Kim Bogyang at the Weather Center. Bogyang, what's the latest on the weather at Jindo? Well, Yusan, things are looking fairly good. Some relief now that the speed of winds have dropped to 0.9 meters per second. For those of you who didn't know, this is about one-seventh of the speed that we got yesterday at this time of the day. Also, waves continue to remain calm at about 0.6 meters. Now, tidal currents are moving at an average rate of about 1.6 meters per second. However, that will further drop to about half a meter per second soon at around 8.35 p.m. We will get four of these similar periods tomorrow, so hopefully more progress could be made then. Otherwise, the weather outlook for Chindo for tomorrow looks to be better than today with sunny skies and calm waves along with breezy winds. All efforts must be put into rescue operations as strong winds and showers are on the way this weekend. That's all for now, and I'll be back with the latest in just about an hour. Thank you, Pogyang, and that's all we have for you at this hour. But stay with us for more on day eight of the sunken ferry search efforts on our next newscast at 9 p.m. Korea time.